One of the difficulties that anybody looking at a property uh, for a first time will, will be missing out on is the overwhelming number of small details that they would otherwise see if they knew what they were looking for. This particular property uh, includes a significant amount of gully area and that's where we're heading now. Uh, we're going down a track that I've cut along the, the bank so that it's an easy walk from the top down to the bottom. Uh, this gully hasn't been, this side of the gully hasn't really been developed yet. Uh, it's one of those projects that I had in mind. But uh, the good thing is that it's all there, ready, willing and able to go for anybody who wants to take it on. So here I am walking down to the base of the gully. Uh, this track was cut uh, probably about six months ago and it was a first cut only uh, based on the fact that I wanted everything to settle down before we came through and did the final cut. Uh, as you can see, the gully itself is relatively full of what I call rubbish. Uh, there are some natives in here. Uh, there's a um, fern, but there is also a lot of rubbish, which I'm taking out uh, and replanting. But just let's carry on down to the bottom here. Uh, and you'll see that there is good easy access to the bottom and in particular across here uh, my next step was to go down to the base that is the base of the gully uh, but my uh, next step was to go down and across to the stream which runs at the back uh, I'm going to take you back up and show uh, a part of the gully that I have developed uh, so that you can see what you can do with this sort of uh, area. Let me just put this on pause for a moment so that uh, we can come back to it later. Okay, so we'll walk back up to near the top uh, and here we are at our juncture. That was the track we walked down a minute ago to carry on right to the bottom of the gully. Now uh, we're going to walk down this track here uh, as an example of doing some further development as we go on. Now uh, this here is my uh, example of getting a tree to grow that you would otherwise have difficulty with. I'm going to take a leap of faith that you can see there this tree here. This is an avocado and it's got to be sheltered for the first two or three years of its life otherwise uh, they just won't, won't survive. So that's an avocado tree that's sitting on this part of a little bank here. Now, over here is where I have actually developed, and oh, sorry, am in the process of developing. So that uh, part, the, the gully face you're seeing there, was the same as this gully face over here with all the rubbish and stuff but it's cleared away and at the moment uh, you'll be able to see up there where there is some planting uh, and they're native plants that have uh, put in there and also uh, stabilizing plants, plants that have got good root structures that allow you to uh, stabilize the, the face of the gully. Now. Uh, I'm going to walk down here so you can see what can be done with the gully uh, and over time. 
So I'm just walking down these stairs. And in particular, I want to introduce you to what is one of my favorite little spots down here. It's the access to the river. Now, as we go down here, the base of the gully has parts that can be damp. Now, we've had a fair bit of rain over the last uh, couple of weeks, so I would not be surprised to find that it was quite damp here. You'll see that I've just got my gym shoes on. Oops, where's that? Where's my foot? There, just got my gym shoes on. <laughs> so we'll have a look as we go as to how damp it actually becomes. And it's a case of knowing where to, st to step. Uh, now, down here, uh, at this part of the gully, in addition to the... Uh, uh, trees and uh, plants that were put up on that face to hold it down here we've been planting some natives like native grasses and kahakatea and, and eventually uh, this is planned to be a bit of a uh, native tree walk through here now uh, so let's just carry on down here. So while there are pools of water that you can see there, they're mostly from my FX, uh, my across four, my four wheeler coming down here because I can drive the four wheeler right into the gully there. Uh, and so we'll just carry on down here. Now I'm making this video because these are the sorts of things that uh, you would never otherwise see. Uh, and believe you me, when I bought the place, I didn't know that I could even get here, let alone that this existed. And so it's been a relatively easy walk down to the bottom here and across this little hand, um, homemade bridge here and you've got the river so you've got your own little river and believe it or not there's a relatively large amount of life in that river We've actually seen a trout in there, believe it or not. And so uh, I see this as my little sunny hideaway. It's uh, half past nine in the morning. There's the sun up there. Uh, we're in early November. Uh, and it is just bathed in sunlight. And uh, there's still a lot of clearing to be done. But this is what I see as the hidden prize. Uh, I'll now just pause this till we go to the next spot. When we started, we walked down there, down here, and then turned and walked down there. Okay. Now, we're going to walk up here. And all of this, uh, I just sit on my ride on mower, just cut around there. So there's a dual apple tree, uh, two varieties. But weird how that main stem is going up and that's not. Uh, maybe a bit of training. Probably needs a bit of obedience training. Uh, this is a three-way apple. I think it's got Granny Smith. Uh, well, I can't remember the other two varieties. But they're quite different parts of the year. Uh, this one here is a plum tree. And... Just starting to get the plums on it now. I 
Not sure if you can see that there. Let's have a look. Where's this camera? Yeah, there's a plum there. Plums. It's going to have quite <coughs> quite a few plums this year. And then over here, these are two pear trees, and looks like they've got a lot of pears coming up on them. And I need to give this one a bit of a stake up. This is a younger version, not ready to fruit yet. I don't think no. Okay. And, and there's the cat. His name is Daniel. We got them from the SPCA and uh, there were two of them originally, two brothers. And the SPCA named them, one was Jack and one was Daniel. And I loved the uh, humour. And so, uh, but uh, Jack, uh, very shortly after we moved him here, uh, took off and we haven't seen him since, and that's probably a couple of years ago. Uh, this is a nectarine tree that's got curly leaf, as you can see there. Still got a lot of nectarines on it, um, but I sprayed it three or four times with copper oxychloride, uh, but obviously didn't get it, so need to attack it a bit more with the copper oxychloride. Um, there's some mandarins. These are mandarins here. And that's an orange tree there. And uh, the, these are relatively young, but as you can see, already producing well and will only produce better uh, as time goes by. Um, Uh, this here, this, this is our passion fruit vine climber. Uh, I expect in a year's time that that whole thing will be, will be covered in passion fruit. Uh, the vine will uh, go up right up from bottom to top. Uh, and the passion fruit are, believe you me, abundant. Um, we've got our strawberry patch here. And the strawberries, as you can see here, just starting to appear now uh, there's a few in there they're still going and then there's me spuds my new spuds ready for Christmas dinner um, and this one here this is the herb area uh, and just getting ready to put a few more herbs in there at this time of the year um, and this is <laughs> I shouldn't show you this, it's so embarrassing. <clears throat> That's beetroot gone to seed. And this is where I put my root veggies. And these are the um, leeks that have gone to seed and the silver beet that's gone to seed. Dear, oh dear. Anyway, uh, that's, these are tangelos, juicy as, juicy as. Then over the back here, we've got two, um, uh, blah, 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 blah. Oh, I can't remember the names of these. <laughs> very famous Fijoas, Fijoas. So we've got the male and the female or whatever, the cross seeding there. Uh, more mandarins. Um, and that over there is an orange tree. And once again, beautiful, beautiful oranges and juicy as. Uh, and then that one over the back there is a lemon tree. Once again, plenty of lemons. Um, and then we come back here, uh, <coughs> this is the, uh, another mandarin tree, and this is a lime tree, believe it or not, uh, and believe you me, there are more limes here than you can count, they look like lemons, but in fact they're limes, and uh, there's another Fijoa tree there, and we've got down here, another avocado. So we've got three avocados. I'm now sitting on my little mini deck on the section adjoining the one that we've got for sale. Uh, the boundary line basically runs up along the uh, stairwell there. But anybody who buys the section is more than ha willing to Oh, sorry, I'm more than willing to have them use that unless and until uh, they build their own or 
they use the track which runs across there and then down here as we saw before to where our avocado uh, sits but the point of this here is or the, the thing I really love about the uh, gully is it's an enclave of quiet serenity the loudest noise uh, the, the loudest noises come from the birds uh, it is fantastic although I do hear a chainsaw away in the background over there but there's the uh, angle of the the gully um, and in my humble opinion uh, this can't be beaten for someone who just wants to sometimes sit and read a book or listen to a bit of music or just do nothing uh, this is the spot uh, you've got uh, the highway uh, over my back shoulder there uh, 300 meters um, and I can hear a little bit of road noise uh, but it's very faint and non-intrusive um, if you wanted to differentiate this from a section in town I mean if you want to differentiate this this section for sale here from a section in town then I would be hard pressed for anybody uh, to beat this um, I didn't know if you just heard the tuis then I'm going to be quiet for a couple of seconds just so you can hear the oh there's a tui just landed in the tree over there there you go You know, it's not bad, it's uh, 9.35 on the 12th of November. Uh, she's a wee bit overcast, but not too bad. The sky isn't overly daunting. A few dark clouds out there, but I think we've got a good day in store. And as I said, it takes a lot to beat this. All right, so the next uh, part of the journey is just to have a look around the uh, backyard where I've got my garden and stuff.